and welcome to Celebration Church Online. Thank you for joining us today. We have an amazing service prepared with a special guest today. We have Pastor Jason Mendez from Sydney. We're going to come around the word in a little while, but we're starting our service a little bit differently today. We are starting with a recap and some testimony before we head into worship. So to recap our week, last Sunday was Father's Day. Dads, we hope you got every gift possible. I was honored to share with us. If you want to go check out that message, you can go find it on our YouTube channel. And then on Tuesday, we had our prayer Zoom. Our prayer Zoom is a great chance to come together across all our demographics and pray. Pastor Benara and Charlie led us in prayer last week. So if you've got any prayer needs, send them through socials, email, and whatever. On Wednesday night, we had our very first young adult service. It was live on Facebook. It was an amazing time together. And we had a special guest, Pastor Caleb Hansey. Him and his wife, Layla, um, lead the young adults ministry at Awakened Church in Wollongong. We were very blessed to be online together. We can't wait to be together again as a young adults community. But it was an amazing time online. On Friday, we had youth. Youth Zoom went off again. Free food is always great. Two weeks ago on our youth Zoom, a youth shaved off their eyebrows, which was done with parental supervision. So I guess that's perfectly okay. But if you are a youth or you know a youth, make sure you send them the link, get them connected in with our youth Zoom. Before the service today, just about an hour ago, we had our business network with the Honourable Paul Green. A great time was had. We had breakfast, but not together, and got to talk about business, starting business, and everything you need to know. If you want to get connected with our business network, go online to our church website, fill out your information, and we'll let you know when the next business network is. Well, we are about to come around some worship right now, but maybe for something a little bit differently this morning. In our chat, I want you to write in some maybe prayer requests or praise reports that you have. In our time of worship today, church, why don't we take a moment and pray for each other? Maybe believe for some miracles. At our prayer Zoom, we've been praying for a whole bunch of things. Make sure you come along next Tuesday night as well. But today, let's unite together. Prayer is powerful. It changes things. So why don't we head into a time of worship, share your testimonies, share your prayer, and we'll come around some news shortly. The king of my heart Be the mountain where I run The fountain I drink from Oh, he is my song Let the king of my heart Be the shadow where I hide The ransom for my life Oh, he is my song You are good you're good, oh, you are good, you're good, oh, let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves, oh, he is my song, let the king of my the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days, oh, he is my song, but you are good, you're good, oh, you are good, you're good. You're never gonna let me down 
Coming up this Tuesday from 6 to 6.30 p.m., we have our weekly prayer Zoom. This is an open invite for anyone in our church if you would like to come together and pray for the needs of our church, our city, and our world. If you would like to join, then just check out the link that we have online. And if you have any prayer needs or prayer requests, you can send them to us online or you can call our church. On Friday from 7 to 8 p.m., we have our youth Zoom. This is open to any youth that want to join. The link will be on our socials, so make sure you're staying updated and checking our social media regularly. Coming up on the 26th of September at 6 p.m., we have our Connect Leaders training. This is for any Connect Leaders or upcoming Connect Leaders. If you would like to join, speak to your demographic leader to get the link. And last but not least, our birthdays for this week are Dave Blackburn and Lani Peterson. If you guys know them personally, make sure you send them a message on Facebook or send them a text and just wish them happy birthday. Hi Church, we just want to take a moment to say a massive thank you for all your generosity, for your generous spirit, for all that you contributed. We are so blessed by it and we believe that the Lord is blessed as well. Uh, every generation was our offering title and we just know that every generation shall be blessed through this. Yeah, thanks again so much Church for all of those that sewed in and that played a part in our celebration offering this year. We are going to leave our giving open over the next couple of weeks for people to still have a chance to be able to give in to that. Our giving options will be on the screen for you now. And then once that's closed, we'll announce what we've got as a church and we're excited to be able to celebrate with you all in that. And also to be able to start these amazing initiatives which we've said we're going to start to do. Um, it's going to be really exciting. So thanks again, church. We love you guys and we couldn't do what we do without your support and your prayers and your generosity. Hey church, Jade and I hope you guys are doing amazing and we're praying for you and can't wait to meet together again. But right now, I get to bring us around the amazing opportunity to give. And I'm going to be reading out of Matthew 6 verse 21. And it says this, For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. And I just want to challenge all of us, is to make your treasure the work of God. Don't make your treasure your money. Don't make it your investments, your retirement accounts. Don't make it anything else. I want you to make your treasure the work, the word, the house of God. That is why church is so important is because when we make it our treasure, we'll do anything to see God move in our city. So let's just continue to give generously, but also make your heart. The more that you give, of course, your heart's going to be stirred to partner and buy in more and more because your treasure is there. 
I've been reading this book recently. It's called God and Money. And one of the most challenging thoughts in it is that you could have all this wealth saved up, but when you die, if you give it away, it took no faith to give that away. It takes faith to give generously right now, though. So let's be the generation that finds our heart and our treasure in the people, in God's work, in God's word, and in God's house. So the giving options are going to be on the screen right now. And I'm going to just take a moment to pray for all of us that our heart is just stirred to be generous. God, I thank you for today and I thank you that you are calling your people to be generous, that we find our heart and our treasure in your work, Lord. So I just pray that you just stir us up, help us to be so faith-filled and to be full of revival as we go out and be generous towards our city, Lord. We just pray for more people to find you, Lord, because of our generosity. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We hope you've been enjoying our service so far. A huge thanks to Ben Green for bringing us around the offering. I just want to take a quick moment before we come around our word. We received a testimony this week. It's great to hear what God has been doing in people's finance. And this one testimony came from someone that felt a number that was placed on their heart to give. It was a sacrificial offering for them and their family. But this week, miraculously, some finances come in three times bigger than the offering that they gave. Our God continues to provide and we're blessed to be a blessing. Please don't give waiting for the paycheck to come in, but know that God will keep on providing everything that you need. So thank you so much for your generosity. The giving options are there. We can't wait to celebrate shortly what we're able to give this year. Now we're going to come around the Word of God. We are honoured to have Jason Mendes, Pastor Jason Mendes from Revive Church in Sydney. Him and his wife Katie have an amazing church, an amazing family. And we've asked him this morning just to bring a word that God has placed on his heart to give. No prompting, no theme put out for him. Just something that God has placed on his heart for our church. He's a friend of the house. So why don't we in the chat right now put an emoji in, say something as we come around the word of God together. Hello, Celebration Church. It's Nat Curtis here. I'm joking. I wish I had the voice of an angel. It is Pastor Jace here with you all the way from Sydney, Revive Church. It is an honor to be with family. So excited to bring this message to you. Uh, I hope that you guys are doing well. I know it's a crazy season that we're in right now, uh, but we want to say that we love your church. We want to say that we love you guys. Uh, before we start, let me take a moment to honor your senior pastors, Pastor Benaya and Pastor Charlie Halliday. Man, we love you guys. Some of our greatest friends and I tell you what, we are praying for you guys. We are standing with you guys in this weird season of lockdowns and online church. But you know what? You guys are incredible leaders. And I'm speaking on behalf of Celebration Church that we say that we love you guys. We're behind you guys. And uh, we want to take a moment to honor you guys. Big shout out to all of our friends, man. Celebration is family to us. And so shout out to Joel and Alex Mitchell and the family. Uh, Even Nat, my man, so good to be with you guys today, sending all of our love down to the South Coast. And you know what? A big welcome to anyone who's new and visiting today. If you're watching online, if it's your first time here at Celebration, we want to uh, welcome you. Welcome to the family. So glad that you're tuning in. Uh, we just pray that this message blesses you, that it speaks to your heart. Uh, make sure you do whatever you can to get connected and stay involved in church, stay linked in. Uh, we would love to connect with you. Well, I have the incredible privilege and honor to share a message and share a thought on my heart uh, with this incredible church. And I just pray that as this word uh, goes forth, as I speak to you, I pray that it speaks to your heart, that it challenges you, that it speaks to you in Jesus' mighty name. As I mentioned already, we're living in a pretty crazy time right now. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's fear, there's mistrust. There's a lot that's happening around the world today. I don't know about you, but it's kind of at this point where it can appear maybe overwhelming. It can seem a bit like, how do we actually get on top of this all? I don't know about you, but I really believe that we need a move of God and we need a move of God now. We need God to really move in our cities, in our state and in our nation across the earth. And as I was thinking about this idea of a move of God, God, we need you to to move. We need you to do something. We need your presence. We, we need an answer from heaven. I was drawn to the story in the Bible in Acts chapter 2, where we see the disciples, they're gathered together they're in one room, they're in one accord, they're praying. And as they're praying, the Bible says the Holy Spirit comes into that room 
and a sound like a rushing wind comes into the place. The, the walls begin to shake. The floor begins to shake. There's just such a powerful sense of the presence of God. And, and I think that moment is so powerful. I, I think that encounter is so powerful. I believe that we need to have those encounters. Yet, when we look at this scripture, to have an Acts 2 moment, we need to understand Acts chapter 1. See, something really important happened in Acts chapter 1 that led to an Acts chapter 2 experience. If I can give you some context, Jesus dies, He rises again, and then He ascends to heaven. But while He's here on earth, for about 40 days, Jesus moved around the city, He spoke to people, He engaged with people, He was with His disciples. Jesus was on earth for about 40 days. And we find ourselves in Acts chapter 1, verse 3. Now again, remember to get an Acts 2 moment, we need to have an Acts chapter 1 experience. And so Acts 1, at verse 3, the Bible says, After his suffering, talking about Jesus, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. This is what I want you to catch. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait. Come on, everyone say, wait. You can go ahead and drop that in the chat. Wait, everyone just wait, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, but first you need to wait. Jesus says, just wait for a few days, wait, but the disciples end up waiting for 10 days. And then they have this Acts chapter 2 encounter, this Acts chapter 2 experience this, this move of God that comes in and literally begins the church, which has changed the world to this day. As I thought about this, 10 days of praying, 10 days of waiting, 10 days of seeking, 10 days of, 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 of saying, God, we're gathered here. We're just going to pray and we're going to believe that you're going to show up. 10 days. Can you imagine what it would be like today if we asked anyone to wait for anything for 10 days? A 10 days of waiting is a long time long time. The reality is today, we don't like waiting for anything. We don't wait for anybody. We don't like queues. We don't like, like standing in lines. We, don't, we just don't like waiting. But the truth is this, everyone wants the wind moment, but no one's willing to wait. We, we can ask, God, we want that encounter moment. God, we want the rushing wind. But to have the rushing wind, you need to learn how to wait. To have a, an encounter with God, you need to learn how to wait. To have an experience with Jesus, you need to learn how to wait. We need to learn how to wait. Uh, I don't know if you're like me, but back in my day, yeah, I'm going there. Back in my day, you had to learn how to wait. Waiting was a part of life. Waiting, just waiting for things. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but, but when I was younger, to get music, it wasn't as simple as what it is today. You couldn't just press a button and get on Spotify. You couldn't press a button and get to Apple Music. No, there was something called LimeWire. Yes, LimeWire. Now, I'm not endorsing this activity. I'm just saying LimeWire, you used to have to download songs and you have to wait for ages, minutes. I'm talking about hours, waiting and waiting until this song gets downloaded so that you can listen to this song. I remember when Dilemma by Nelly and Kelly came out. Man, what a track that was. No matter what I do, all I think about is you. Even when I'm with my... What, what a track. What a jam. It was a, it was a song of the 90s. What a great, great track. I remember when that song came out, I decided I was going to download that song. I remember downloading that song. I tell you what, it took me about four years to download that song of LimeWire. Like the, the way LimeWire worked is you would download a song. You, you could literally leave, go out, find dinner, hunt dinner, kill it, bring it back, skin it, cook it, serve it, eat it, clean up. And then finally your song was done. I, I mean, it would take forever to get these things out. And, and I remember it taking so long. I remember waiting for hours for this song to come and to, to finally download onto my computer. But once it downloaded, 
can I be honest with you? For the next six months, I reckon I listen to that song every single day because you, you would just soak it in. It's not like these days where you just, if you don't like a song, skip. Oh, I don't like the chorus, skip. Then, I mean, you would download this song because it took so long. It became so valuable. What I want you to catch today is that's an important truth that we need to understand is that anything worth having is worth waiting for. Anything that is worth having is worth waiting for. If it's worth having in your life, it is worth waiting for. My issue today is that I believe that we have lost the art of waiting. We've lost the art of waiting. If we want food, we go and get it right now, fast food. If I don't even want to go get it, I can go Uber Eats it. Back in the day, you used to have to go to a shop called Video Easy to go find the movie that you want. And sometimes it was like out of stock and you have to wait, come back the next week, right? Today, everything's all on Netflix. Everything's all on Prime. Everything's all on Disney+. Plus. I mean, everything is just accessible. It's all at our fingertips right now. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm all in for the technology that we've walked into. I'm so grateful for where we're at right now. But I think along the lines of history, this idea of convenience has actually crept into our faith. Convenience has crept into how we pray. Convenience has crept into how we worship. Convenience has crept into how we do church, into how we do life. If you look at the Bible, the disciples had to wait for 10 days, but it's not just them. David, from the time that he was anointed as king to the time he became king, that was 13 years. Joseph, when he received the vision of becoming um, someone of significance to the time that he became someone of significance, that was also 13 years. Abraham and Sarah get a word from God about ancestors and about future. And the only time they have a kid is 25 years later. The message of the world is convenience, but the message of the gospel is commitment. It's about waiting. It's about waiting. It's about learning to be patient and learning to push and learning to seek until we see God move. I actually believe that that is the generation that God is raising up today. He's raising up a generation that seeks, a generation that prays, a generation that pushes, a a generation that presses in, a generation that knows how to wait. And so today, if you're taking notes, the title of my message really simply is this, worth the wait. It's worth the wait. Go ahead and type that in the comments. It's worth the wait. So Father God, I pray that you would speak to our hearts today. Challenge us, grow us, stretch us, we pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. It's worth the wait. It's worth the wait. Let's have a look at some scripture. Isaiah 40, verse 30. We're going to go from the New King James Version. The Bible says this, Even though, even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall, but those who wait, (laughs) there it is. Come on, everyone say wait. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Those who wait. Those who wait. You know, when you look at this word wait, and what we're going to do is we're going to spend a little bit of time understanding this word. The word wait in the original Hebrew has a couple of meanings. One of the meanings is, is pronounced kavah. That word means to bind together. Wait, those who wait on the Lord, that actually means to bind together. Essentially, it's saying those who bind themselves to the Lord shall renew their strength. You catch what I'm saying here? Those who bind themselves to God, those who bind themselves to His plan, those who bind themselves to His purpose, they shall renew their strength. See, the picture in Isaiah 40 is not about just waiting around for something to happen. No, it's saying those who bind themselves, those who press in, those who lean in, See, waiting is not about doing as little as you can. Waiting is about pressing in as much as you can. Waiting is about going, no, no, I'm not going to just sit around hoping for something to happen. No, no. Waiting is about pressing in. Waiting is about leaning in. And that's the first point I want to make to you today is number one, to wait is to seek. To wait is to seek. It's to press in. It's to go after God. It's not meant to be to sit around and hope for the best. No, it's to seek. Everyone say seek. To wait is to seek. S-double-E-K. To wait is to seek. I want you to think about this concept of binding together. This word actually comes from the origins of making a rope. See, what they would do is they would get literally hundreds and hundreds of strands of fabric and they would bind this fabric together. And as they would bind the fabric together, it would then form this rope. 
Now this rope becomes unbreakable or very hard to break because it's so bound together. Let me preach this to you for a second. If you bind yourself to God, you will find that you are hard to break. You will find that you are hard to shake when we bind ourselves to God. We want renewed strength. We want to rise up on wings like eagles. We want to step out in a calling and step out in a purpose. Can I encourage you? You need to learn how to bind yourself to God. You need to learn how to seek. You need to learn how to press in, to bind together. Because the more that we bind ourselves to God, the stronger that we become. The more that the strength rises on the inside of us. I hope you're catching what this scripture is trying to say. You know, in Matthew 7, the Bible says this at verse 7. It says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. If you seek, you will find. If you bind together, if you lean into God, you will find God. Right now, we're looking for answers. We're looking for what's our next step. Can I tell you, when you seek God, you will find Him. You'll find Him. So our job as believers is to seek God. It's to press in Him. Why? Because to wait is to seek. You guys remember that game, hide and seek? I sure hope you remember that game, right? Hide and seek is very simple. The idea is that there's someone who seeks and a whole bunch of other people that run. They hide. And so as they hide, the seeker goes out and, and, and looks for them. And so what they generally do is they'll count down, you know, five, four, three, two, one, boom, everyone's gone and you now have to find the people. It's the whole point of the game. Let me tell you how the game doesn't work. Everyone goes and runs. It's five, four, three, two, one. Okay, can't find you. See you later. I'm done. I mean, you can't just end the game quickly. The whole point is to go out and seek. However, I think that is the picture of what some of our faith looks like today. We start with the intention of seeking God. We start with the intention of praying, the intention of worshipping. Yet, if we kind of have a moment where we're not finding, where we're not seeking, where we're not having an experience or having an encounter with God, we just give up and we go, oh, I just guess I can't find you. See you later. We start praying and if we're not having an experience, we just kind of walk away. So often, that is a picture of what our relationship looks like with God. Can I encourage you? If you seek, you will find. It's not just a matter of opening your eyes and hoping for the best. No, we need to learn how to go after God, how to pursue God, how to pray to God, how to seek His face, how to worship Him, how to press in to Him. Hebrews 11, it says this in verse 6, And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that, that He exists and that he, he rewards those who what? Who earnestly seek Him. We need to learn how to seek God. Number one, to wait is to seek. God is trying to teach us how to seek, how to press, how to push, how to pursue, and how to wait. So point number one, to wait is to seek. I hope this is helping you and stirring your faith today. The second part of this meaning in that Hebrew word, kavah, Number one, it means to bind together. But number two, it means to wait on. It means to wait on. Let's read it again. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord. Note that it says those who wait for the Lord. It doesn't say those who wait for the Lord. It says those who wait on the Lord. Not those who wait for the Lord, those who wait on the Lord. These are two very different things. The second point I want to make to you today is this, is that Yes, number one, to wait is to seek. But number two is that to wait is to serve. To wait is to serve. Let me explain that to you. Let me, let me draw your attentions to one of the great establishments in our nation, McDonald's. When you're at McDonald's, the way it works is you kind of go up, you line up in a queue, and you make your order, you receive a ticket, then you go off and you wait to the side, and you wait till they call out your order so you can go ahead and pick up your food. I don't know if you've ever been in that line before, guilty. Uh, but as you're in that line, you kind of look around. There's not really much going on. Everyone's pretty chilled out. People are looking through the gram. People are playing a bit of Flappy Bird, crushing a little bit of candy, right? I mean, everyone's just having a very relaxed, chilled time. Yeah, on the other side of that counter, it's like chaos. I mean, people are flipping burgers. There are sounds going off. There's buzzing. There's sizzling. People are running around asking for orders. I mean, on the other side of the counter, it looks 
wild. Now, I want you to notice something very interesting. On this side of the counter, we are waiting for the food. But on the other side of the counter, they are waiting on us. On this side of the counter, I'm just waiting for food. So it's very relaxed, it's very chill. But on the other side of the counter, they are waiting on us. They are serving us. Notice that waiting looks very different. It just depends on what side of the counter that you're on. If we were to translate this to our faith, you are either waiting for God or you're waiting on God. Two very different outcomes. Waiting for God looks like this. God, I'm just waiting for you to do something in my life. God, I'm waiting for that man. God, I'm waiting for that opportunity. God, I'm waiting for that marriage. I'm waiting for that ring, God. God, I'm just waiting for that job opportunity. I'm waiting for that business. I'm waiting for that, that capital to come in. God, I'm waiting for that idea. I'm waiting for that promotion. I'm waiting for more time. We're just waiting and wait. we're just sitting around and waiting. God, I'm just waiting on you. But waiting on God looks very different. The picture of waiting on God is, is if you go to an upper class restaurant and you're sitting there about to have dinner, waiting on looks like this. If I'm sitting at a table, a waiter will come over to me and be attentive to everything that I need. The moment my glass gets a little bit low, boom, the waiter's there, he's filling up the cup because he's waiting on me. The moment I finish my entree and I put my cutlery down, the plate's gone. Why? Because the waiter's waiting on me. The moment I have an order or, I've, or I put my hand up, the waiter's right there, ready to, um, ready to serve, ready to help, ready to do whatever he needs to do. Why? Because he's waiting on me. That is a picture of waiting on God. When we are waiting on God, we are serving Him. So in this time of waiting on God, don't just stand around and twiddle your thumbs and sit on your hands and go, ah, I don't know what's going on. God, I'm just waiting for you. No, 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 stop. It says those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strengths. We need to learn how to wait on Him. So in this time of waiting, serve Him. Lean into Him. Serve the house. Serve each other. Serve your community. Serve the people around you. Serve your family. Serve your leaders. Serve your pastors. Serve the church. Serve the house. Serve God because it's in that place that that is where we wait. We wait on God. We're not waiting for Him. It's so important that we as a church learn to wait on God. We can spend our whole lives waiting for God and miss the fact that we're meant to be waiting on Him that entire time. Can I encourage you, church? Let's be a church, celebration church, that waits on God. Instead of waiting for a miracle, we are waiting on God. Instead of waiting for a partner, we are waiting on God. Instead of waiting for something to happen, we are waiting on God. Instead of waiting for an opportunity, we are waiting on God. Instead of waiting for breakthrough, we are waiting on God. Number one, to wait is to seek. But number two, to wait is to serve. So the third point, last point that I want to share with you today, I hope this is stirring your faith in Jesus' name. That word wait in the Greek translates to meno. And what that word meno means, it, is, it means to abide, to tarry, to last, I love this, or to endure, to endure. So we have the meaning of wait. Number one, wait is to seek. Number two, to wait is to serve. But number three, in this Greek word, the word wait means to stay. To wait is to stay. To wait is to stay. Number one, to wait is to seek. Number two, to wait is to serve. And number three, to wait is to stay, to abide, to tarry, to last, to endure, to stay. In John 15, in the New King James, verse 5, it says this, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Catch this. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Without Jesus, we can do nothing. Without his presence, we can do nothing. So those who abide in me. Waiting on God means to abide. It means to dwell. It means to live. It means to remain. I want you to catch what I'm saying here today. To abide means to live in. Not just visit, not just to pop round, not just to swing by. It means to live. It means to abide. It means, means to remain. So when we wait on God, we are remaining in Him. We are living in Him. We're walking with Him. We're abiding 
in Him. The, the, this is so, so, so important for us to understand because so often we, we, we get our fix once a week at church. We get our fix once a week at an online service. We get our fix at, at connect groups that happen over Zoom. Uh, we get our church fix. But the Bible's saying, no, no, don't just visit me. Abide in me. <laughs> Don't just pop around for a visit. No, no, no. Abide in, dwell in, remain in me. Because when you remain in me, that's where you will bear much fruit. Church, can I tell you today, following Jesus is not a one night stand. It's a lifelong commitment. We don't just pop around when we feel like it. We don't just pop into church. No, no, no. We abide in Jesus. We abide in his presence. We abide in his word. We abide in prayer because to wait means to stay. Yeah, I don't know if you remember this, but back when I was in school, right, when we had the, you know, the old, I don't even know what they're called, rotary phones, motor, motor phone, whatever they were, motor phones, rotary phones, whatever they are, they just had that, that thing, right? And so you would, you would call up your, your friends and, and hang out. And I, I remember once calling up Katie, my wife now, married her, that's, that's called a long-term investment, blue chip, right? And so there I was, I, I would call Katie. And I remember there were times where we would just talk on the phone for hours. There was even times where we would get each other on the line and we would just not talk at all. We would just stay on the line. We were calling her and just staying and just waiting. Have you ever been there before? Call the person that you love, call your crush. They just wait on the line. How about remember that times where you would, you would call them and be like, hey man, you hang up. She's like, no, 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 you hang up. No, 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 you, you hang up. No, 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 you hang up. No, okay, how about let's hang up together? And so you come up with this idea, let's all hang up together. And it's like, okay, ready? Five, four, three, oh, butterflies in your stomach. Two, one. Ah, we didn't hang up. Ah, right? You, remember those times? And you would just stay on the line. Nothing was being said. Nothing was happening. You would just stay on the line. I, I just wonder if that would speak to us today. I wonder if that's God's heart towards us today, that we would just stay on the line. So often we're just quick to leave. We walk into a prayer meeting and we walk straight out again. We walk into church, we walk straight out again. We, we come along to a connect group and we just leave and we walk straight out. But, but, but what would happen if we would just stay on the line in our own quiet times? We start praying, or we read a quick verse and and, and if we run out of time, we just close it up and we just leave. We start praying. We're like, hey, Jesus, um, you know, pray that you're with me today. And, and then that's it. That's all we say to God. I, I wonder what would happen if we would just stay on the line. If we would just stay in his presence. If we would just abide in his presence. If we would just wait in his presence. If we would just stay on the line. I believe God's saying to us today, stay on the line. Stay on the line. Don't hang up the phone. Stay connected. Stay engaged. Keep talking to me. Keep hearing my voice. Keep waiting. Keep waiting. Keep pushing. Keep seeking. Keep staying. We've lost this concept of spiritual endurance. We go into prayer meetings and we rev the engines for 10 seconds and then it just all disappears. What happened to waiting on God? To tarrying? To enduring? going, God, I'm going to keep praying. Even if I don't get an answer, I'm going to keep praying. Even if I don't get a solution, I'm going to keep talking. E even if I don't know what's happened, I'm going to keep seeking you. Because to wait means to stay, to stay, to stay in the presence of God. As I finish this up today, in my own journey, my, me and my wife, Katie, we've walked this journey of ministry. We've learned some significant lessons about staying. Significant lessons about staying. I remember there was a time where we were under so much pressure and under so much stress in ministry and it was hurtful. People were saying things about us. There was gossip going on. There was rumors that were happening. And can I be honest with you? It hurt. It got into the heart and, and it was hard to handle and it was hard to process. Yet we felt the God word was to stay. And despite the pain, we chose to stay. Despite the discomfort, we chose to stay. Not because it was a good idea. No, because it was a God idea. And God spoke to us and said, stay. He said, stay. Despite the challenge that's going on, stay. Despite the words that are being spoken of you, stay. 
despite the rumors that are going on around you. Just stay, despite the opportunities that are coming and being presented to you right now. Just stay. Why? It's because there's power when we stay. Look at my life today, and it was a result of us saying we would stay. It was a result of us being obedient to God and saying, God, because you said to stay, we will stay. I want you to catch this today. Sometimes we want God to give us a way to leave. But often, God will give you the grace to stay. God, help me get out of this problem, but God will give you the grace to fight through it. God, give us, give us a way out of this strife, but God will give you the grace to stay. God will give you the grace to endure. God will give you the grace to wait. Can I encourage you today? Don't leave too early. Don't quit too early. When you're praying, when you're seeking, don't just drop off the map. Learn to wait. Learn to press in. Why? Because to wait is to seek, to wait is to serve, and to wait is to stay. You know, I know that you guys as a church meet in connect groups and you guys go through some questions. So I have a couple questions for you to speak through and chat about with your connect groups. Here's the first one. Question number one, as you chat with your connect group, number one, this is the first one. Why do we find it so hard to wait? It's an awesome opportunity for you to open up and just share. This is, this is why I'm finding it hard. Let's talk about some of the obstacles and some of the challenges as to why we wait. Question number two, when was the last time you had a God encounter and how did that impact you? When was the last time you had that moment where you felt God speak to you, where you felt God um, move in your life? When was the last time that happened and, and what was that experience like? How did it impact your life? And then question number three, how can I move things around in my daily life to make time to wait on God. Let's get practical. How do I move some things in my life? How do I move things around to make sure that I'm having a moment to wait on God? Today, I want to remind you, keep serving, keep seeking, keep staying, keep pushing, keep praying, keep being faithful, keep giving, keep loving people, keep building the church, keep serving the church, keep pursuing God, keep waiting in the presence of God, keep seeking His face, don't stop, keep going, keep communicating with your spouse, keep respecting the boss that you feel like doesn't respect you, keep loving people, keep loving your neighbor, keep honoring your parents, keep going to school, keep being faithful with your work, keep going with what is in front of you, because when we keep going, when we keep pushing, when we keep moving, that is when we find out that it is always worth the wait. I'm just so thankful to be with you guys today. I love you so much, Celebration Church. Believe in God's favor and blessing over your life. Let me pray for you. Father God, I thank you for everyone who's watching this today. I thank you for this incredible church in the south coast of our nation. Lord, I pray that you bless Celebration Church, that you bless Pastor Benaya and bless Pastor Charlie and the rest of the team, the staff, the board. God, I just ask that, God, this would be a season of great increase, of great opportunity as we as a church learn to press in to you, as we learn to seek you, as we learn to serve you, as we learn to stay in you. God, I pray that we would be a church that would wait on you. Bless this house in Jesus' mighty name. And we pray that our best days are ahead of us. In the mighty name of Jesus, everyone said, Amen. A huge thank you to Pastor Jason for that amazing message. We have a few things before we finish our service today. We would love to give the opportunity for anyone online right now that would like to respond to Jesus. On our church website, celebrationchurch.com.au forward slash Jesus, you can find out all the information about this decision. But we believe as a church that Jesus came, died and rose again and made a way for us to have relationship with God. And all it takes is this, us submitting our life to Him, repenting from our sin and turning back to Him. We believe that Jesus loves you, that He has a plan and a purpose for you. And if you will choose to give your life to Him, you can start the greatest adventure of your life. You can go to the website, you can see that prayer and pray that this morning. Fill out your information and get connected in. After our service, we've been having Zooms in Connect Groups and other places. But if you're not in a Zoom and would love to do some family together, you can head to celebrationchurch.com.au forward slash Zoom. Every single Sunday, there is going to be a link there. This Sunday, right now after the service, I'm going to be hosting that Zoom. So come along if you're not in a Zoom. We're going to take a moment. We're going to pray 
together. We're going to look at some of the questions from Pastor Jason's message that's going to appear on the screen here right now. And we're just going to have a time to unite together as a family. Church, my last encouragement for us before we pray is don't be isolated in this season. Get connected. There's so many ways to do that. Maybe you need a phone call. Maybe you need to exercise together. Maybe you need to do grocery shopping together. I don't think we're allowed to do that. But stay connected in this season. Let me commission us this morning and you can go off for your amazing day of watching TV and eating food. Let me pray for us. God, I just thank you for our amazing church family. I thank you that you're on the throne. I thank you that you are worthy of our trust and our faith. And we just say that, God, we trust you. We have faith in you. We ask you continue to do miraculous things in our lives. We thank you for the word that was shared this morning, God. May it be more than something we hear once. May it change and transform us. And as we go out into our week, may you bless us, give us opportunity to share. May we stay safe and healthy and may you continue you draw us closer to your heart in jesus name everybody said amen amen in the chat amen great church we'll see you in zooms after the service we'll see you on tuesday for our prayer zoom stay connected we will see you soon